Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Weather or Not. We have a lot to cover, including your forecast for this upcoming weekend. We'll also have a few stories in Nature in the News about Hurricane Willa making landfall on the Mexico coastline, as well as Pennsylvania taking a lead in the plastic straw issue. Patrick Wright also has a feature about the Arboretum's Pumpkin Festival from this past weekend. Weather or Not starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Weather or Not. I'm your host Jacob Morse. And I'm your forecaster Bree Guy. So Bree, it looks like a wet weekend, especially on Saturday for the game against Iowa. What can we ex expect for that? Yes, a very wet and chilly weekend. So it is going to be a rainy game, so do not forget your ponchos. But I'll have more on that later in my forecast. I'll be sure to remember the poncho for the game <laughs> on Saturday. But first, here is Nature in the News. On this past Tuesday evening, Category 3 strength Hurricane Willa made landfall on Mexico's west coast with life-threatening storm surge, 120 mile per hour winds, and rainfall amounts of over a foot. On Monday, Willa peaked to a Category 5 strength hurricane with 160 mile per hour winds before weakening slightly before landfall on Tuesday. The west coast of Mexico transitions quickly from beaches near the coast to a very mountainous terrain just inland. This steep rise in elevation added to the risk of land landslides and flash floods. Willa made landfall near the city of Mazatlan, which is home to many high-rise hotels and about 500,000 people. Some of the moisture and energy from the remnants of Wilma will track across the Gulf this week, bringing more rain to Texas and then help form a coastal storm that will impact Pennsylvania over the weekend. Issue concerning plastic straws and bags and how they negatively impact the environment have reached an all-time high this year and many places around the world are issuing bans on the items. In our own countries, cities such as San Francisco and Seattle have placed bans on plastic drinking straws in takeout containers. Others, like many New Jersey towns, have added a plastic bag fee. Recently though, Pennsylvania decided to take action and be a part of the fight. Narberth, Pennsylvania became the first town in the state to pass a law that bans plastic straws from businesses and adds a 10 cent B for plastic bags. This combats the single use and throw away culture that the world has grown accustomed to. There will not be a tax on the straws for people with disabilities may need them. The law will go into effect in six months. In order for businesses owners to get used to the law, the first violation will result in a warning, the second will be a $100 fine, and the third and fourth will be a $200 and $500 fine within one year respectfully. The action prompted state officials to introduce legislation on plastic straws and bags statewide in the hopes to be leaders in the sustainable movement. Last week, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, released its annual winter outlook for the United States. It's important to note that on these maps that the darker shades of each color do not represent the size of the departure from normal, but rather they indicate the probability of being above or below normal. NOAA's outlook can be summarized by warmer than normal temperatures for most of the United States due to a 70 to 75 percent chance of a weak El Nino developing with warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the central and eastern Pacific Ocean. In terms of precipitation, a wetter than average winter is favored across the southern tier of the United States, while drought conditions are likely to persist across portions of the west. Here in Pennsylvania, we have about equal chances of having a warmer or cooler than average winter, as well as equal chances of having a wetter or drier than normal winter. The Department of Conservation and Natural Resources in Pennsylvania will soon give electric and hybrid car owners access to many free, easy to use charging stations throughout Pennsylvania's 121 parks and 24 districts. Some, such as the Washington Crossing Historic Park in Bucks County, will be able to charge up to four vehicles at a time. The stations are able to fully charge a vehicle in two and a half to seven hours, which allows visitors to enjoy the park or forest. Out of the 67 counties in Pennsylvania, 33 will have charging stations. The charging stations will cost about $5,000 each and typically serve two cars. The project will be funded by Volkswagen Settlement with the EPA over emissions violations. The project aims to encourage the reduction of the state's carbon footprint and move towards a more environmentally friendly state.
Hello, I'm Brie Guy with your weekend forecast. And let me tell you, those dry conditions that we were experiencing will not last throughout the weekend. This coastal system is moving towards our area, which will bring more rainy and cloudy conditions that will last throughout the weekend. Temperatures, though, will continue to drop well below the normal for this time of year. So it's going to be a chilly rain for this weekend's game day. This new low pressure system that's moving into our area, though, on Sunday will bring another bout that will move through relatively quickly, but there will still be rain Sunday night going to Monday morning and the conditions will still remain chilly. As for Friday though, we will be hitting a high of 50. Those showers will start to move into our area. We'll drop down to 41 as that rain does continue to hang on to our area for the rest of the weekend. Saturday though for the game day against Iowa for the 3.30 p.m. kickoff, conditions will be rainy, a high of 44. So those temperatures will drop up over 10 degrees below the normal for this time of year. So don't forget your ponchos and put on layers because it's going to be a chilly one this game day for Sunday. Temperatures will come up slightly, but still will be well below the normal for this time of year. There's going to be a leftover chance as that system moves out of our area though, but as for Sunday, there will be another bout moving through later on. And now here's Patrick with a feature on last weekend's pumpkin festival at the Arboretum. People aren't the only thing smiling at this year's Penn State Arboretum's annual Pumpkin Festival. Pumpkins came in all shapes and sizes, showing off the spirit for this year's fall season. The festival is in its eighth year at the Arboretum and is the largest public event held at the venue. The pumpkin carving contest started with the Arboretum handing out over 600 pumpkins to be carved this year. Eventually narrowed down to a set of winners in specific categories ranging from best in show, different age groups, and Penn State students. The pumpkins came in varying shapes and sizes, showing off the creative spirits of the State College community. Kate Reeder, the events and marketing coordinator for the Arboretum, prides the festival as a way to show our pumpkins off to the world. We have creativity galore because people bring uh, jack-o'-lanterns, which they have carved, or in the case of children, which they have painted and decorated uh, in some manner to uh, represent whatever their imagination inspires them to put on the pumpkin. The festival also dazzled visitors with the local music, food, crafts, and a magician bringing some magic into the season. Although the magic was not enough to prevent some bumps in the road in regards to the weather, with rain moving in for the last day of the festival and the near record amounts of rain this year, almost squishing the fun with pumpkins. Well, this year has been uh, one of the most unforgettable years for harvest. Uh, we, we pay the uh, College of Ag Sciences to use some fields out at Rock Springs where Ag Progress Days are held and the fields get flooded. With the fields flooded, the Arboretum went on the hunt to find pumpkins that were not diseased or rotten, even finding pumpkins at an auction. In the end, 600 pumpkins were given out of the usual 1,000. So the weather was um, almost the enemy this year. The weather proved to be no match for the spirit, effort, and will of the over 100 volunteers and staff at the Arboretum putting on an amazing spectacle for the community. One of the most satisfying parts of uh, this festival continuing every year is seeing uh, the students mixing and mingling with the community and seeing the children who are growing from year to year with this as their tradition. With Halloween next Wednesday, the best time to carve the pumpkins is now. The jack o lanterns I think regardless of the weather, uh, only seem to have a maximum of like seven days. If it's hot and humid and wet, they kind of close in on themselves. Which means with this rain this weekend, may your pumpkins not shrivel up and you have a spectacular Halloween and fall season. For Weather or Not, I'm Patrick Wright.
Hello, I'm Brie Guy, back with your extended forecast. And after that coastal storm that moved through our area this weekend, temperatures will continue to be below normal for the rest of the week, though. But first, a quick weekend recap. On Friday, those showers will start to move into our area, and the cooling trend will start. We'll be hitting a low of 41 on Friday, and then only back up to 44 on Saturday. So it's going to be a chilly rain for the game. So make sure that you do layer up and do not forget your ponchos. We'll drop down to 38 on Saturday, and then on Sunday, we'll be slightly up to 49 but still well below the normal for this time of year. We'll have a low of 40 and the rain chance does remain as that system does just slowly move out through our move out of our area. As for next week though, temperatures though will be on the rise. They will still be remain below average for this time of year but conditions will be dry so we are going to be done with the rain just for a little while and but the only rain that you're really seeing on the screen is going to be on Monday. Temperatures though will be on the rise below normal, but still going to be a nice dry week. So, Bray, it looks like those cooler temperatures will stick around into next week, even after the coastal storm this weekend. Yes, it's going to be a very chilly rain that we're going to get this weekend, and then temperatures will be slightly up going to next weekend, but still not close to seasonal, so it's still going to be a pretty chilly trend throughout the week. And with that coastal storm this weekend, we are going to get a decent amount of rain, so related to that, we asked you a whiz quiz question a little earlier in the show. What year on record did State College Pennsylvania receive the most total precipitation? Was it A, 1996, B, 2003, C, 2004, or D, 2011? If you answered A, 1996, you were correct. Records in State College date all the way back to 1893, and in this 125-year history, the year of 1996 is when State College received its most total precipitation. This precipitation total was enhanced by the remnants of Hurricane Fran and a subtropical storm that passed over Lake Huron, both of which dumped more than two inches of rain in one day in State College. It's also important to mention that 2018 is currently ranked fifth on the list of wettest years in State College. And with more than 65 days left to go in the year, 2018 will probably rise up further in the rankings before the year is over. And with that coastal storm this weekend, that'll surely add to that total of total precipitation. Oh, this yes. Year. <laughs> not going to be good for this area. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for this week's episode of Weather or Not. I'm your host, Jacob Morse. And I'm your forecaster, Brie Guy. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.